Hello everyone, welcome back to Gloomhaven. Yesterday, we had a lot more success repeating Harrow Hive, doing some of the basics that you guys have been kind of nailing into me, making sure we don't burn stuff too quickly, making sure we adapt to what our enemies are doing, making sure we change our own plans if things aren't going quite the way we need them to, and considering long resting where appropriate. So we're back in the city, we have leveled up with Brutus, but before we do that, let's go and check out a city encounter. After a night of heavy drinking, you get turned around while navigating the back alleys to find yourself standing before a collapsed section of brick road that leads down into an underground tunnel. Fueled by curiosity and a bit of liquid courage, you descend in search of adventure. Stumbling around in the vast network of tunnels provides proves rather fruitless, however, until a well-concealed passage leads you to a long-forgotten stash of weaponry and dried food. You st the stuff could fetch a decent price at the sunken market, or you could turn it over to the city guard, which is always in need of arms and rations. Well, in our narrative plot, our plan is to overthrow the city guard and use Jexera's undead army to conquer the city. So we don't want to make the city guard any stronger than they already are, so we are going to sell the goods. We get 10 gold each. So with that done, we can go over and look to level up Brutus. He's going to get to level 4. Unstoppable charge. Attack for 5 with 1 XP. Or move for 4 and stun all adjacent targets. Get burnt. Or devastating hack. Attack for 8. Get burnt. Loot 1. So we can still take Juggernaut or Brute Force if we wish to. And we have now, of course, have Unstoppable Charge and Devastating Hack. A straight attack for five seems pretty good to me. Brute Force, though. Attack for two in an arc with Muddle. can't look at the muddle thing i'm wondering if this would be a better option for us because it gives us another mood which we need them quite badly shield is like fine that doesn't hurt at all attack two and muddle means things that attack us will do so with disadvantage i think that's muddle i guess you're still getting attacked either way though so if there's a choice between unstoppable charge and devastating hack I think it's unstoppable charge because I'd rather repeatedly attack for five and then have one really good valuable move and burn than I would a loot card and attack for eight once. So we'll take unstoppable charge. And then if we're going to play it, we need to remove something. I've been told wall of doom is not terribly good. But I think Overwhelming Assault can come out. Attack for 6 and burn. Or attack for 5 and not burn. Seems like a simple trade. And we leveled up, so we get a perk. I've also been advised that getting rid of these negatives more quickly is more important than anything else. But we've gotten rid of the negatives that we can with Brutus, so we can only take other options add one plus one shield oneself add one disarm card and one muddle card add one stun card plus three two plus ones obviously two plus ones makes the chance of us drawing on negative cards be far lower. But then it does mean the odds of us drawing our big impactful cards are lower as well. P 
Pierce is good, but it's only good when you're facing enemies that have the uh, the shield that you need to get through. And some of our bigger attacks now are probably going to be able to do that anyway. So I think I'm going to go with Pacify here. One Disarm, one Muddle. We get to draw those, we get to draw through to other things more quickly. That's done. Right. So we have seven of the 13 things in our merchant class to get through before we can unlock something and raise our prosperity by one. I did not know we had choices of skins. Interesting. So two helmets, two chest, two legs, three hand or two hand, and four other items. Well, we have 47 gold, so getting to this isn't going to be that hard to do. I think this is one of the more easy things to work through. Kill three oozes, three lurkers, and three spitting drakes. We haven't killed any of those yet in any period of time. So let's go shopping for a moment. We can't hold a third thing until fifth level. Necklace and teeth. We have our two head items. We need to buy another body item. Remove two minus one from your attack modifier deck. That would actually be... The last two minus ones being gotten rid of. And we now have more HP now that we've leveled up again. So why don't we get ourselves a second skin? This is Brutus, shopping. And rather than having two attacks where we get one extra shield, we'll just have two fewer minus ones in our deck always. That seems great. And so now... This is up to 8 of 13. And now the question is, do we want to overthrow the military kill Jack Sarah options, or do we do something else in the interim before we go on this big overthrow the military quest? Because that was a really, really chonky time. Also, Faith, do you want to buy anything at the shop? Probably not, I think. We could take a ring of skulls. We can certainly afford it. Maybe we'll save it for when we come back to do the big quest later. Stop the cultists. I don't really want to stop cultists at this point. Follow the Aster's directions on the place the coin describes. So we receive this as a city event, I think. Ancient artilleries, night demons we've seen before, stone golems, sun demons, and the colorless. Objective, kill the colorless. Let's give this a go. Our road event, of course. You're feeling a tad hungry when you, as you walk down the road. You are considering stopping for a meal when you come across a thicket of bushes covered in green berries. The berries look delicious, but you hesitate. They could be poisonous. We've eaten the berries once and received a boon from eating the berries, so I'm suspicious of green. 
Not wanting to regret making a stupid decision, you refrain from eating the berries and continue down the road. On your way to the location indicated by the Aether, dark clouds loom over you. A light drizzle begins to fall as you approach a small temple hidden in the Dagger Forest. The building seems abandoned, but once you're inside, you're transfixed by a fascinating sight. An eternal twilight sky spans over you. Caught between night and day, the room is illuminated by a strange glow. A quick survey of your surroundings, however, indicates that you are not welcome. Demons of light and shadow approach. All right, have one or more monsters present on the map at the beginning of every round of the scenario. Use your equipped items a number of times equal to or greater your level plus two during the scenario. So our level is currently four plus two is six. How's our equipment going? Necklace of teeth we're going to use every time we kill something. So that's pretty easy one to do, I think. This we don't know how many rooms or doors we'll need to breach in order to keep it up. So we'll take professional there. Loot a chest. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted. We are more likely to see Brutus not become exhausted, I think. And is there anything we want to change? This guy doesn't have a, bu a bunch of shield, does it? Doesn't seem to. It says health is zero, but I think it gets a special boss value for health, which is sneaky, but fine. I think this is fine. That's what I'm used to. We'll go with that. All right, we're out in the wilderness today. There is an ornate chest. There is a trap that poisons and immobilizes. We've got a night demon, a sun demon, another night demon, and another sun demon. Then a door at the end, which leads to a corridor, a curved piece of corridor, and a final room at the end. So a relatively simple dungeon crawl. We don't have to kill everything. We only have to kill the boss at the end. The two ornate chests contain the Crystal of Zenith and the Sphere of Midnight, respectively. Mercenaries that obtain them can discard them in a hex adjacent to the Colorless to use their effects. At the start of every round, Light and Dark are set to Strong, and Fire, Wind and Ice and Earth are set to Inert. Okay. Interesting. Mercenaries that obtain them can discard them in a hex adjacent to the colorless to use their effects. Well, I'm going to guess we're going to want them then. But for now, we can make our decisions. We don't have... Super Mega Instant Death equipped. I was thinking I might use it on the thing with 9 health just to have it be gone immediately. Because it's a reasonably high amount of health that I'm not looking forward to dealing with. And from here we're going to have to move at least 3 to get an attack in, which we don't have heaps of great movement, although we could move forward four, one, two, three, four, and then attack for four. That seems like a great time on hook and chain. 
and then unstoppable charge for five. Would be attacking for nine against a thing with one shield. Do you have innate innate advantage, innate flying, but no innate um, attacking us back, whatever that's called. Can't remember. So hook and chain. Unstoppable charge. Hopefully they don't go before us because that could ruin our plan, but we do what we can because we must. I'm aware it's the other way around. And here they are one, two, three away each. We can attack both of them with a flurry of blades. But then not much to do on our bottom cards. We could move into and poison the flame demon. And then if we do that before brute, then they will have more damage taken against them. So let's go for that and hope that they go after us, or at least the sun guy goes after us. They do. Excellent. Move to attack three. Infuse element. Move to attack five. Consume element to attack even more. That's terrifying. But if they move, uh, if they move two, they can get to us. Wherever we stand. So, unideal, but we will do what we can. So here, we're going to make this attack action disadvantage an attacker with this oh this is just all things yeah all attackers always gain disadvantage so that's to be expected and then we're going to move to here skip the last step poison you Don't need any of that stuff. Then we are going to move four. Because we moved in a straight line, we get to attack for four. Plus one through the poison against the one on the shield. Basically cancel each other out. That minus two is rough, but it's the only one in our deck. So our next attack is going to hit unless we draw the absolute miss. Uh, and we can add one to this to make sure they die this turn. Otherwise, they're going to do an attack for three, which I think is worthwhile. Because otherwise, if this guy get, if we get attacked for seven and then three more, We're nearly dead already, so I'd rather guarantee that we don't take this attack. And I feel extra justified on the plus one. Um, what action are we... Oh, we're confirming gain one HP when we kill something. Even though we weren't injured. Oh, they miss us. That's incredible. Right, so we're up again. We would really like to kill both of these guys if we could. If we trample, we can move four. We could move one, two, three, four, five, six, and land on the ornate chest and attack the things we move through which is these two guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we could use our hammer to stun them both as we go through, and they will not get attacks this turn. So trample seems great. And we're gonna to want to do something on top that's beneficial to us, preferably something fast.
We could put up Retaliate. We could Spare Dagger, although that's pretty slow. Let's put up Retaliate and then Trample. And then Faith here, attacking something on its own. We're not going to get any bonus to that. We're always going to be attacking at disadvantage, which is always a pain. We have Thieves' Knack, which is an attack on bottom. So if we flanking strike top, Thieves' Knack bottom, we might be able to get two attacks off and kill this thing. And then if we do, this guy could still move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We would attack that, but we wouldn't get to the chest yet. All right, please be slow enemies. They are. So here we are going to attack on top first because if this kills it we can then use our bottom to move whereas this if we attack and it kills it we get one experience but then we can't do anything with our top half of card so attacking at disadvantage we don't get the extra one but that's fine we'll do this here and that is a nice death Do we want to get anything back? I was told I can press 1, 2, 3, and 4 to see what we have, and I can see that these are the ones that we've spent, which is really good. If we take Flurry of Blades back, we can move and then get advantage on all of our attacks this round. And then we could attack with Swift Bow or Singled Out, depending how the rest of things go. So we'll take the Stamina Potion for Flurry of Blades. And end our turn. Now we are still going to do this, I think. Are we? We could do a standard move two, that would get us to here. And then we could attack with piercing here. They're going to move two and attack for seven. Move one, attack for two at a range of four, target all enemies within range. If they move to here, one, two, three, four, they'll be attacking everything. But if we end up on the chest and they move one to here so that they're within range to attack Faith, it will proc our retaliate. So I am going to do that. One, two, three... Four, five, six. Or, in fact, what I might do, we'll put our boots on. So that's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Confirm that movement. Then attack with the Warhammer and stun both of the creatures that we move through. And then end the Brute's turn. We get the gold that we're stood on, which is just a nice bonus. And they're stunned, so they don't get to do anything this whole turn, which is excellent. Now, we want to hit the Sun Demon really hard. Or we could Provoking Raw and attack them with this Psalm, and they just won't get to hit us this turn. So that's a top move. 
Do we have a loot one? We don't, but we can use any amount of movement to move back and step onto the chest. So what are we least likely to use for any other benefit right now? I don't think I need to worry about pushing stuff, and we're not going to use warding strength for its warding abilities. So we'll play those two. And then over here, you're going to get disarmed and not attacked. We want to kill this thing. If I was stood here, could I pull it onto that tile? I don't think I could. But if I could do that it would be great although poison and immobilize still means they could attack brutus so maybe that's actually not beneficial to us swift bow is good flurry of blades would give us advantage on our attack cancelling out the disadvantage so if we move with flurry of blades on four and then attack with swift bow that's three on four. This guy has four HP. We can't increase the strength of that attack anyway. But it's going to have to do, I think. They're going slowly again, which is great. So we are going to move four, gain advantage on all our attacks this round. Stop on the gold. And stop at range so that we don't have disadvantage attacking this creature. And then we're not going to have disadvantage here because our advantage cancels out their disadvantage. Please draw plus one. We miss entirely. Fine. Here we are going to disarm attack. And we drew put muddle on them, which is fine. And then we're going to step back onto this chest so that we can loot it at the end of our turn. Treasure chest found. Crystal of Zenith. Some kind of quest item thing. I concede. I didn't actually clock that they weren't moving this turn, which is an excellent result. So now back to us again. We can't hit both of these guys. But I can spare dagger on bottom and basic attack on top. We don't have piercing, do we? Uh, skewer, we'd need to get rid of air, which we don't have. We only have light and dark. If they don't have movement, if we push them, they wouldn't be able to attack us. So I'm going to Wall of Doom, basic attack two on top, and sweeping blow move, stand where I am, but push them away. And then here, I guess we're going to move in one step and then attack. I don't really want to flintlock here. Or we could get a single out going. Your next four attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of their people get plus two. But then we don't have any ranged attack. We could try and do it slowly, so that they might come to us first. That might be our better bet. Alright, it's going to hurt, but we're going to do it. We 
take one damage. That's absolutely fine by me. Now over here, we were going to basic attack two on top. Very nice. And then skip movement. At the end of your turn, if adjacent to the colorless, you may consume this item to deal damage to the colorless equal to twice the number of mercenaries in the party. Interesting. Okay, well, apparently we don't get to push if we didn't move, which is upsetting. But sure. Right, we were going last so that we could set this up. And then attack there. Very nice. End Scoundrel's turn. Sun Demon, what are you doing? Take one damage, that's fine. And they are muddled. Right, we only have Spare Dagger and Skewer left, which is great because it's a top attack and a bottom attack, so that's fine. Over here we have Smoke Bomb and Flintlock left. Uh, I can loot one on top and then move two on bottom. And that will do me just fine. What are they doing? Healing three at a range of three. It's a bit lame, but it doesn't hurt us, so it's not the end of the world. So we'll loot this gold. And then pull two at a range of three, but they're flying, so they wouldn't get hit by the trap anyway. But we could pull them just so that they're out of the way, so that Brutus can move along. Or we can take two steps across. I think I'm just going to take two steps across. Uh... Did they decide to just not heal? I I'm confused. Still, that's fine with me. We are going to attack top here. And attack bottom here. Heal for one, thanks to our necklace of teeth. Don't need to do either of those things. And that's our turn. So we can long rest or short rest. We don't need to worry about the healing. But we can burn one card and refresh all of our items. So that's burnt. The shoes would refresh. That's burnt. So it'd just be fresh shoes. But we'd also get to pick what card we burn rather than it deciding for us. But on a short rest, we get to get up to the door, which we're not going to be able to do otherwise if we just keep standing here. And then Faith basically has the same decision. She's got nothing going on right now. She would benefit ever so slightly from the healing. And we get to pick what card to burn. And... We have nothing to refresh. Can we can we refresh our leather armor? It's not burnt. If that refreshes on a long rest, I'm gonna be amazed. Have I missed that fact entirely for ages? So let's long rest. And go on then, we'll long rest here as well. Sure. We both roll 99 on initiative. We are going to perform our long rest. We are going to get rid of... Wall of Doom. And Faith is going to get rid of
Special mixture, I think. And that's the round, so it's back to us again. Now, we want to get to the door just as fast as possible, basically. We don't have any top moves. So it's going to be whatever we can move on bottom fastest without discarding, preferably. So that's going to be hook and chain for move four. And we have our boots ready. And then once we've gotten to the door, one, two, three, four, five, six, we can probably attack something when we get through. Spare dagger will let us do it at range. Skewer would let us do it on one part of the range, but not the other, because of the geometry of the room. So we'll go with Spare Dagger. So that's top and bottom. Uh, do I care about if we open the door first before Faith arrives? I think I do. Then once Faith catches up, we're going to be moving one, two, three, four, five, six into the room. So Faith wants to move one, two, three, four at least to get into the doorway. And then we'll see about a flurry of blades when we get in there. Or would I rather a swift bow? Because we have more range on a swift bow. And we're going to be stood one tile behind. Yeah, so we'll flanking strike for movement. And we'll swift bow, but we'll go after Brutus does. So we are forming a move four plus uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, plus boots gets us to here. Oh, joy. Well, those are horrible to deal with, it seems. There's the other chest we want to pass by. Part of me wonders if I want to retreat slightly. Move zero, attack for five. Attack one at a range of five. One, two, three, four, five. As long as I'm stood here, nothing can hit me. One, two, three, four, five. So that's fine. Let's stay here in the doorway. These traps are poison and immobilize. And attacking these two is much of a muchness. We miss. We are going to move up to here. Then attack this guy. And are we going to pierce through his shield right now? Not for one extra damage. When we can do dagger throw and hit multiple things and take that benefit. They do nothing because they didn't move and turn into range at all. So we want to attack these guys at range, but we don't get too many options for doing so. That said, perhaps we can skewer on top. Is there anything useful we can do on bottom? Healing is not useful. We could put up warding strength. We could move and push, but I don't think we can move to push anything into the trap. So we definitely want to skewer.
We're just not going to get anything else to go right now, I think. Unless Faith pulls someone in or something similar. Attack two at a range of three, targeting three. One, two, three. So we want to Flurry of Blades, attacking both of them, and we'll use our Piercing Bow to get through their shield. If we're doing that on top, what are we doing on bottom? We could pull one of them. Pull to a range of three. One, two, three. Might be able to pull this guy into here, so let's do that. And then if this guy is pulled into here, we can attack far more efficiently. We can do an unstoppable charge on top. Still not really anything great to do on bottom though. So we'll do an unstoppable charge eye for an eye on the event that we get hurt. Push all adjacent enemies, attack one at a range of four in this pattern, no problem. Move one, attack four. Well, Scoundrel is going to attack the two of you with piercing. Nice 2x there. And then we're going to pull you onto this trap. You are poisoned and immobilized. Alright, this is going to suck. Yeah, that really, really sucked. Uh, so, we are attacking on top. Going to attack the poisoned guy. And then healing ourselves on bottom, as was the plan. And we'll take a healing potion as well. Right. I'd love to kill these guys before they can kill me. Sweeping blow will hit both of them. That's a top. Or Provoking Roar could disarm one of them, stopping them from hitting us. And that's fast. So that's Provoking Roar. And Sweeping Blow to push one of them. Because the plan is, if we attack for two, with the poison that makes three, that means this thing dies. Then sweeping blow, we can move one and then push this thing away from us. And then if it doesn't have move, it won't be able to hurt us. Then faith from behind. Our only real attack here would be flintlock which is our big attack that we're probably thinking about saving for the big boss in the next room. We could move, stand on the poison immobilized trap to give ourselves an attack, a chance to attack. Unfortunately, we can't stand where Brutus is to disarm a trap, although if he's going to move anyway with sweeping blow, we could move in one and then disarm a trap. It's not a very exciting turn, but this guy's going to get pushed away, so we'd have to move two to then attack them. We could attack them with poison. So we'll go Thieves Neck, Venom Shiv, and give ourselves options, basically, I think. Hopefully I haven't screwed that up. Attack 1 at a range of 7 isn't going to hurt us too bad. It's only attack 1. Attack 5 at a range of 3, Stone Golem suffers 2 damage. Wow. That's very interesting. So... 
So we are going to They are attacking five at a range of three, so they will still be able to hit us. When, if we disarm this guy, he won't be attacking us. Then we could move here, get out of Faith's way. We will be poisoned and immobilized, but this guy would be disarmed. Faith would be able to move in. And she could move in for two and then attack the guy on the right for three. Maybe that's better. Maybe that gets us attacked less. Alright, it's going to get weird. We're going to deliberately trigger this trap. We don't get to finish our push action for standing on the trap. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm learning, but I'm mad. All right, well, you're disarmed, so we just definitely want to kill you, basically. So it's going to be... Move this. Attack you. Oh, man. The minus one is killer. Take four, that thing dies because of the two it takes. This thing is disarmed, so it doesn't actually hurt us. Takes two anyway, which is lush. Destroying these turret things is going to be a pain in the neck. Attack and push, or attack for three. Is it worth trying to move six? One, two, three, four, five just so that we can be adjacent to these guys and start hitting them. We'd burn a card to do it, but if there was ever a time to burn a card to move six, it seems like the time. Faith probably needs to short rest. So let's do that first. Flanking strike. I kind of like it. That's fine. Right, we can kill this thing. Or if we... If Faith can move forward like three, four even. One, two, three, four. We can get to the chest. And then Flurry of Blades, the other things. And then here, we need to attack this guy. The one shield might really screw us, but at the same time, we might be just be able to run away. Range, attack two, range five. All adjacent enemies suffer two damage, so that's like an uh, explosion. And move one, attack three. So our plan was... We are going to move five onto this chest. And then we can target three things. That's just... Excellent luck because of my poor planning.
We've got the Sphere of Midnight. And then the Brute. We're going to move six, and then we have attack on top for two. Oh, we're immobilized. I'm really dumb. Really, really, really dumb. All right, in that case, I'm going to get warding strength going. There's only one more room left. Our immobilized is gone. We take two damage there, and I hate it. Take one damage there. Right. If Faith can kill these two things, I will consider long resting. I don't think we can kill these two things. So we are going to short rest. Spare dagger's loss is fine. Now we want to, we do not have shoes, so we want to move one, two, three, four at least, preferably five. Also, ugh, these traps around here are actually incredibly in the way, that's very rude. This is obstacles, and we can't get through to here. That's like real trash. Do we have any push twos? Push one. Heal. Move five. Pull. Move. Attack. Getting through these traps is going to be like a long time, and I regret getting rid of Thieves' Knack now, having not looked at the rest of the room first, because I'm dumb. But we all knew this about me, so I don't know why we would be surprised. Basically, we want to attack these two things before they attack us anymore. Then we can worry about the traps and stuff. One, two, three, four. And stun. Move three and push. One, two, three, four. Hook and chain gets a four with a big attack. One, two, three, four. We can't skewer across those types of areas, though, which is a shame. And we want something on top. All right, we'll take Retaliate just on the off chance that our hook and chain doesn't go well. And we're going to attack you with that. So over here, we want to attack you. Swift Bow will attack three at a range of four. Smoke Bomb, Flanking Strike, move five. One, two, three, four, five. We can get onto the first of the traps. I'm just going to Google if you can destroy obstacles. Basically, we got rid of our way to disarm traps, and we don't have Cragheart who can destroy obstacles. So we are going to have to move for five, and then swift bow and attack. Five gets us to here. Uh, let's take this opportunity for minor healing potion. Nope, let's not, because I don't care about the poison right now. Do I care about the poison right now? No. Not if we're going to go through two more traps with poison. So we're attacking you. Done. And we are... Attacking you. Alright, that's done. We heal ourselves for one because we killed something. We've completed the professional, which is nice. Uh, and here we can just retaliate for nothing. Doesn't do anything. End our turn. 
Right. We need to move one, two, three, four to get over to the next piece of trap. We can do that by burning a card. And if we short rest to get back Hook and Chain, we'd have to burn a card anyway. So we might as well skewer to get over to here. And along with that, let's just get rid of Provoking Roar because it doesn't have movement associated with it. And over here, we can't move. We can loot one. That's valuable to us. So there's six gold. We are immobilized, so we can't move. And we can't pull traps or anything. So we skip our ability. We end our turn. The immobilizer is gone for next time. Now here, we are going to move six. I'm going to assume this trap's going to stop us as soon as we step onto it, but I'll try and get to here. Yeah, this was expected. And we can't attack stuff, so that's done. End the brute's turn. We're just going to play the two cards we have because we can't do anything else and we don't want to long rest and burn stuff yet and then we need to short rest and move because we need to get rid of this trap then we can consider long resting afterwards we need smoke bomb for the big explosion at the end please don't draw our giant shot after this that's fine so we need to move two Do Venom Shiv and Swift Bow. So we're going to move to here. Confirm. Gets rid of that last trap. Now we will heal and get rid of our poison before we come into the next room. Probably should have healed via long resting to get rid of the poison, then use the healing of the potion for three rather than the two. But that's fine. We can't attack doors, I don't think. So we skip our attack. We don't use that, of course. Now, we are immobilized. So we just played these two cards because they were our last two cards, didn't we? Now we have a fresh round and we're going to long rest on both counts. Uh, no, here we're going to, are we going to invisible now so that when we walk in next, we are invisible? Or are we going to long rest and just get rid of Venom Shiv? I think we're going to do that. Oh, this is the Brute. Uh, that's me being dumb. What are we getting rid of here? I think I for an eye at this stage can probably go. Yeah. And here we were planning to get rid of Venom Shiv. Now we've got through the 
trio of traps that we were dealing with and we can bust into the room and we need to kill the colorless when we get into the room. So we want the brute to open the door and then here we want a smoke bomb flintlock. We can move for three, push one, and put our boots on for five. One, two, three, four, five. That'll probably be fine. And we'll do that with an unstoppable charge. So we are moving three and pushing with boots. Finally reaching the entrance to the sanctum, you prepare for the last challenge. You open the door to a place stuck between eternal darkness and blinding light. Two huge demons flank a Savas, whose chest pulses with black and golden lights. Savas cannot normally master those elements, but by the look on its face, you guess that doing so drove it mad. There is a treasure chest that is always of interest to us. Uh, for right now, the last of our movement can only get us here, but I'm happy with that because it's going to let us get an attack in. Uh, or I could push this thing back. What's it doing? Moving to attacking for five. Well, pushing it back is going to do us no good, so we might as well hit it. If we could pull two plus ones... That would be incredible. That's good enough. We heal for one. That's the end of the recent. At the end of your turn, if the adjacent... At the end of your turn, if adjacent to the colorless, we are not. We are one tile off adjacent. Oh, lovely. Yeah, just make more stuff. That's great. Alright, the Sun Demon didn't get to do anything. That's wonderful. We are going to make ourselves attack five, a range of four. One, two, three, four. We're not going to reach anything if we do that. Ah, oh, man. I did not think that bit through. So I think we're going to have to move in two, which is actually going to be a move in four, to here. And then go invisible. Now we're up. We need to kill this thing. If we move two, uh, an invisible character cannot be focused on nor targeted by the enemy, but can be damaged by non-targeted damage. So we know where it is, we just know that it's invisible. That's really lame. So with these attacks, we can basically do nothing. We don't know what these guys are doing yet. So. I guess we disarm the creature that we're next to. And we hook and chain to move and attack. And here. We can flurry of blades, attack two at a range of three. We can attack both of those guys and we can move two and collect the treasure chest. That's basically what we can do. So. They get targeted. And we move to and loot every hex we enter with this action. A 
a helix ring. Find out what that does later, I suppose. Can't do that because we're not adjacent again. I'll take three damage there. Now it's our turn. And we're actually going to move and attack the Sun Demon and disarm it because it hasn't attacked yet. So we're going to move two, because that's a straight line. Skip the last of our movement and attack here. And we have disarmed it. We're going to disarm it again, just because we have the attack to play. Something can't be disarmed twice, but that's fine. The colorless. Summon Night Demon Invisible Self. Are we ever going to be able to uninvisible this guy? Seems very unfair. Uh, we need to short rest here because I don't think we can manage through a long rest. We'll just get attacked a bunch. Uh, we're going to lose hook and chain. Sure. Provoking roar on top. Disarms. But sweeping blow would allow us to attack multiple creatures and if we move four and stun we could move one two three and then attack the whole arc it would mean that would be our last turn though faith still has another turn in her but if we don't start attacking the sun guy we're never going to finish this fight so i don't like this but it's happening Oh, Faith is going to get one more turn, isn't she? Crap. We're going to lose our flintlock, but that was going to get burnt anyway. And we can't target the big bad anyway, right? Very lucky there. So we can't target this thing. We just can't. This we would have to attack at disadvantage anyway if we were attacking it. And the other guy's going to get hit by the other guy, so disadvantage here is basically moot. We are going to move to here. Skip the last step. Confirm that. Then attack here. Now, can we use this thing? We can, but it's not going to be enough. This guy's still invisible. Summon that even invisible self. How do you ever kill this guy if he's just invisible all the time? It just seems very unfair. I don't understand how you're ever supposed to be able to hit him. 
if you can't ever see him, all everything he drew out of his deck was be invisible. I'm flummoxed. Well, a marathon session. We're back in the city. Join me next time. We'll see what it is we collected in the chests and see where we need to go from here. But thank you very so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.